this series? They they might eat it out. They might <laughs> eat it out. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough series though. All right. What's good though? Let's talk to me, man. All right, you good, I, man. I, I I wanted to um I, I guess a good place to pick up is uh you heard what happened with Fabulous, obviously. Yes. The F A B O L O U S. Mm -hmm. And the only people that I've heard talk about it. And they addressed it in their in their podcast, uh, the Joe Button podcast. Uh, nobody else really touched on it because mm -hmm. he's very liked in the in the hip hop community, and yeah. nobody really wants to touch on it. But I know this is nothing's off limits, and you said nothing is off limits. So I wanted to get your take on it based off what you what we saw and anything that you may know on the outside. Fabulous in his domestic uh, violence case right now. Uh. I don't really know too much about it because they're not really talking about it. So You saw the video, though. Yeah, yeah, I saw the video, but I'm just okay. saying people in his camp, they're definitely not talking, and she's not talking. She's, she's, she went nuclear on her page, so <laughs> ain't nobody's really talking about it, so it's no real information, I guess, only the TMZ story. So what, what do you heard. think about the video, though? What do you think about the video? The video is alarming in a, in, 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 in a couple ways because he had a knife. He had a knife? Yeah, he had a knife in his hand. I didn't know that was a knife. Okay. Yeah, what? Go back and look at it. He had a knife in his hand, and the, 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 the part about it is, for me, that I say it's troubling is that what did he expect her father to do? Like, her father was protecting his daughter. He has two sons, and she has a daughter. So if the the little girl that lives with him, that's her daughter, was placed in that situation, his job, he's obligated to do the same thing her father did. Like, fathers love their daughters. They're, not, they're supposed to protect their daughter. So based off what you saw in the video, Mm-hmm was fab wrong even everything that you just said I, I i see what you're saying with the kids and all that i can't say, was he, i can't say he's wrong because i don't know the details or the origin of the problem but i don't know i mean what i what i'm saying why i feel he's wrong as far as feeling like why is her father there that he's wrong for even thinking that but as far as what if, if he's wrong about the situation, I don't know because I don't know what happened. But he, it's still domestic violence is not cool, and he shouldn't have had a knife, and he shouldn't have put his hands on her. So he's wrong to that extent if that is true. See that? I mean, that's it's a big conversation right now, and Whoopi Goldberg has been on record to say that a lot of us are saying that there's never a reason to hit a woman or there's never a reason to bring violence to a woman. However, Whoopi Goldberg feels that if a woman hits you, she has, you, you have the right as a man to actually hit a woman back. Now, some men say that, that it ain't no reason to ever, even if the woman hits you, there's no reason. But something's not right with that situation. And I don't know Fab, I don't know Fab personally. What? What do you feel is not right about it? Because maybe then we could elaborate off of it because, like, at the end of the day, I'm looking at it from a different prism and you're looking at it from a dis different prism. You're talking about the video. What do I feel that... What do you feel is wrong with the whole situation as a whole? I feel that there's some... I, I feel more than likely that she was baiting him and she's using the victim. She could potentially be using the victim role because she knows that most women get the benefit of the doubt. Now, again, I just know Fab's pers uh, persona. I, I don't know him personally, but he seems like a pretty cool dude. Now, what you're saying, I, I, I get totally what you're saying, and you could be 100% right. But here's the situation with that. In that situation, and in him being fabulous, meaning like he's a star, he's been around people like gold diggers and grimy people and 
he's always at alert. When you when you at that stature, you're always at a alert for everything. So that means he should be aware of her trying to put him in that situation. So in essence, even if a woman is trying to bait you, even if it's your woman, you got to walk away. Have you ever been, you've never been in a situation like that? I think all men have been in a situation like that. I'm not going to talk my personal life as far as nothing's off limits, but my wife is not here to sit and talk with me. So I wouldn't try to have a conversation about, you know, us with that situation. But the, 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 the thing is, every man, I've got baited before. Every man have, Every man has gotten baited. You know, every man has a past. Every man probably made mistakes, but at the end of the day, it's what you learn from it. Now, if this was his first time and they've just gone through this, then this is something that he has to learn from. You see what now, I'm saying? I heard he, I heard he knocked two of her teeth out. I, that's still allegedly. We don't know. Right. But we do have to. There has to be some type of parameters. We're gonna have to, as a society, create some type. Oh, of... Oh no, path. that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. I'm never, I'm never going to sit here and say that is acceptable. No, I said he should, he, he should be aware of her trying to bait him and he should have walked away. He had security there. He had a car there. He could have gotten his security, gotten his car and calmed down and then spoke on it at a later time when cooler heads was there. That's what I'm saying. Like okay. in, in those situations, if you're being baited, you have to walk away, especially if it's someone that you know and love and trust. Okay, so it sounds like you you are aware that there are some females that are doing this. Of course, of course there is. I, I, I'm not giving her the benefit of the doubt and I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt. The, the situation is he was caught on camera with a knife making threats so it looks bad for him she can play the victim role because he put her in the victim role baited or not the optics is what they uh, uh, uh how they say 90 percent of of reality is perception mm. so we we see it's telling us a story you get what i'm trying to say mm-hmm so that's what people are going to go off on. She could, you could be right. She could have did something wrong, and she could have baited him and have everyone against him, and she could have been actually the culprit. But that's not what the optics show. Yeah, that's like with the Chris Brown situation and Rihanna. I hate to go back, but with Chris Brown and Rihanna, a lot of people were saying, like, what did she do? And then... See, but then people don't want to have the conversation. They're like, well, some people will say, well, it doesn't matter what she did <laughs> yeah, he was still because supposed he shouldn't to, have done that. He still should have got out the car. Even but, if, so, so you don't care what she did. So she Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen mm -hmm. to me. I'm a 42-year-old grown man, right? Mm -hmm. with, with a wife and with two daughters. <laughs> My conversation about that is going to be totally different from a younger person's conversation and a person that probably have never been through situations like that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I've seen domestic violence. I know about domestic violence. So at my age, there's no way in the world I can promote to the world on our platform that it's okay to hit a woman. So can you educate us from your standpoint about yeah. domestic violence? Okay. And in a situation... Men and women, please. Okay. For, for a man, because I'm a man, right? So for a man, you have to be strong enough to walk away. Like, if you feel like you're being baited, if your conversation is leading towards uh, violence, thoughts or behavior you have to walk away like walk away is the biggest thing or you have to be quiet until cooler heads prevail there's never a good outcome when you start hitting a woman okay so let me just i know you're gonna finish but okay so there's there's somebody gonna be listening to this 
and they're like, they hear that all the time. You got to walk away. You got to walk away. Me. Right. But she's chasing him. Let's say she's chasing him and not letting him walk away. That's now, but then she's committing domestic violence. Domestic violence is not only a man hitting a woman. It's a woman hitting a man too. Now, you have to be cognizant of once you hit her, she's automatically the victim. You might have to call the police and get her off of you. Because at the end of the day, it's a different narrative once you hit her. She can hit, she can hit the man, the cops will come, and they'll restrain her and let you walk away and let you go about your business. But if you hit her and the cops come, you're leaving the handcuffs. So you have to be cognizant of that. And the same thing goes for women. If you're having a conversation and it's getting to be violent or the thoughts are being violent or you feel like a man is about to get violent with you, you have to learn, women have to learn how to be quiet and walk away too or be quiet and don't provoke. I'm not saying provoking, you should get hit. But if you know provoking is about to lead to you getting hit, you need to be quiet. See, it's two sides to every story. Actually, three. Yours, hers, and the truth. And everybody always tells the story to navigate to their side. You're not going to get up in court and testify and say you're wrong. You're going to say you're right. You're going to, you're going to create a story to, to, to make it look like you're right. So you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh-huh. So in domestic violence as a whole, we have to learn how to suppress the, that thinking and that feeling and walk away. Because if you are that mad at your significant other, right, and you feel like that's what you need to do, and then you do it, only worse things are coming down the pike. But if you walk away, go have a drink, go sit down, go think, go talk to a close friend, and cooler has prevailed, and then y'all come back and y'all both thought on the things that y'all thought was wrong, the conversation is going to be different, and then that's how problems get solved. Mm. You see, we have to learn how to communicate without violence. It's, it's, like, it's like we cannot listen to have a rebuttal. We have to listen to understand. You see, when, you, when you're with a female and you're telling her how you feel and then she, she's just waiting till you finish and then disregarding everything you say and just saying, but this, that, and the third. That's how stuff like that leads to because, and same thing for the man. Listen to the woman and hear what she's saying and process it instead of just listening to have another answer. Because now everything that person said to you, you're, 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 you're having no respect for. These are all the things that leads up to domestic violence. Usually it starts with a conversation, turns into an argument, then it turns violent. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if we stop it at the first level, which is a conversation, that's where you have to stop domestic violence at. We have to learn how to conversate without getting angry. And then even if you get angry, you have to have the tools of what to do when you get angry so it won't go to level three, which is violence. And you said one of the tools is walk away. Walk away. Get away. Go get a drink. Go yeah, have a drink. It's something to calm yourself down. And then think about what the other person was saying to you. Like, think about the conversation. Don't think about the argument, because the argument is the second level. When, you, when, you, when you're thinking about this and you're alone or you're talking to somebody, reflect on the conversation. Not the argument. Right. How did the conversation get to the argument? So now if you're reflecting on all of that, that's where the answer lies. The answer always lies in the conversation. 
the argument starts 